In this lecture, we're going to look at the colour of organic molecules. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain why most organic compounds are colourless. Describe what is meant by the term conjugated system. Explain why some organic compounds are coloured with reference to molecular orbital theory. And recognise a chromophore and explain its role in the colour exhibited by the compound. Let's look at a random selection of some organic molecules. So what we've got here is salicylic acid, we've got benzoic acid, we've got cocaine and we've got some heroin. Looking at them, you can't tell which one's which. They all look much the same, just white powders. And in fact, the vast majority of organic molecules do lack colour. So if the powders are white, if the solutions are colourless. So first thing I want to do is explain why most organic molecules are lacking in colour. And to do that, let's go back and remind ourselves about metals and transition metal compounds and why they were coloured. Right, here's some lithium being put in a Bunsen flame and as you should remember, you get a nice red colour. Now lithium uh, has three electrons, so two in the 1s orbital and one in the 2s orbital. And when you put the lithium into the Bunsen flame, this electron gets promoted into a higher electron shell and then as it falls back down, it emits radiation and this energy difference just happens to correspond to the red end of the visible spectrum. And when it came to transition metals, the transition metals got the colour by interactions between the 3D uh, atomic orbitals. So when a transition metal formed an octahedral complex, it, you lost the degeneracy of the d orbitals and then there was an energy gap here which often corresponded to the wavelength of visible light and as long as you had partially filled d orbitals then energy would be absorbed from the visible light spectrum by the promotion of an electron from a lower to an upper orbital and depending on that energy difference you could end up with purple permanganate solution or this is a blue copper sulfate solution. So the appearance or non-appearance of colour in compounds is all to do with the difference between the atomic orbitals, or at least it is in this case. But when you come to organic molecules what we want to look at is the difference between the molecular orbitals. So here we've got a couple electrons and this represents the highest occupied molecular orbital. So it might be ones of lower energy, but this is the highest occupied molecular orbital. Normally given the acronym HOMO, highest occupied molecular orbital. And this represents the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. And this molecule will absorb radiation of the appropriate wavelength from the electromagnetic uh, spectrum. But it just so happens that this energy gap between the HOMO and the LUMO is very large. So that means it absorbs energy of high, absorbs radiation of high energy, which is usually in the ultraviolet region. So the energy gap between the HOMO and the LUMO is large resulting in the absorption of light from the ultraviolet region of the electromagnetic spectrum. And so that means that it's colourless to our eyes. So that is the reason why the vast majority of organic molecules have no colour. 
However, there are some exceptions. There are some organic molecules which are coloured. I want to explain how that arises. Right, so we're going to talk about chromophores. Now, chromophores is the group of atoms within a molecule which is responsible for the absorption of light in the visible region of the spectrum. So if you've got a coloured organic compound, it must contain a chromophore. So, vitamin A, for example, is yellow. So here's some vitamin A. And this is the chromophore. So this bit, which is highlighted in red, is the portion of the molecule which uh, is responsible for the absorption of light. Beta-carotene, which you find in carrots, sweet potatoes, apricots, and unsurprisingly, that's orange. Okay? And again, highlighted in red is a chromophore, the region that is responsible for the absorption of visible light. Here's another example, lycopene, found in watermelon, pink grapefruit, tomatoes, and it's red in colour. And again, highlighted in red is the chromophore. So, what you should notice that in all those cases, the chromophore is a section of the molecule which seems to have alternating single and double carbon-carbon bonds. And that system of alternating single and double bonds is called a conjugated system. And what the conjugated system does, uh, it contains delocalised electrons spread over a number of atoms. And I'll explain that in a bit more detail in a minute. So all these molecules contain conjugated systems. Uh, of alternating single and double bonds. So here's another example where the conjugated system would be so alternating double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single, double. Okay. So here's two examples. On the left, we've got a conjugated system double, single, double. On the right here we don't have a conjugated system. We've got two double bonds, but uh, it doesn't alternate, it goes double, single, single, double. Right, so all these carbon atoms in this molecule are sp2 hybridised. So they've got three sp2 hybrid atomic orbitals, which they use to form sigma bonds with the hydrogens and one of the carbon-carbon bonds. The other orbital is just a non-hybridised p orbital. So, I'm just drawing in the p orbital of the carbon atom. Okay. So if we take this one for example, this p orbital here, we know it forms a pi bond by the sideways overlap with the p orbital of this carbon, but it can also just as easily form a side a pi bond with a sideways overlap of this p orbital of this carbon. So in fact, you kind of get this amorphous pi bond which extends over the entire area above and below the plane of the molecule and you can find the electron is delocalized or all the bonding electrons are delocalized over the entirety of that area they're not stuck in their little pi bond between two carbon atoms it can spread over the entire area so that's why this conjugated system allows the delocalization of the electrons. In this case, it won't happen because, again, if you draw in the non hybridized p orbitals, of course, this atom doesn't have a non hybridized p orbital. 
it's just an SP3. So this P orbital and this P orbital can overlap with each other to form a normal pi bond, but it can't then overlap with this one here because there's too big a gap. So it breaks up the delocalization of the electron. So you need every single carbon atom in the chain to be sp2 hybridized in order to get this large delocalized conjugated system. So if we look at the conjugated system, the chromophore in this molecule, I kind of skipped over this earlier on, but I said it's a section that goes double bond, single, double, single, double, single, double, single, double. Now you could be tempted to extend it to go double single or at this end double single but that would be wrong because every carbon atom in the conjugated system has to be sp2 hybridized so that one there is sp2 hybridized so is that one so that one 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 that one, that one. But this one isn't sp2, you know, it's not got any double bonds attached to it. It's just a normal sp3, as is that one. So you can't just necessarily just go double single, double single, double single. You need to make sure you don't include any carbon atoms which are sp3 hybridized. So the conjugated system starts there and finishes there. You can't extend it onto that carbon atom or that carbon atom or indeed that one uh, because uh, they are not sp2 hybridized okay so here's the gap between the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest un unoccupied molecular orbital in a normal non-conjugated system but if we have a conjugated system what we find is that the gap between the HOMO and the LUMO is decreased. And the greater the conjugated system, the more it's decreased. So the longer the chain of double single bonds go, the smaller the distance between the HOMO and the LUMO. So that means the smaller the energy gap, and then that means you move from the ultraviolet into the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Of course, the colour we actually observe is not the colour that is absorbed by the molecule. So, if the chromophore absorbs light of one colour, then what we see is a complementary colour. Okay. So, for example, in lycopene, which was the uh, red colour, the chromophore was absorbing green light in the region 480 to 560 nanometers. So if it absorbs that light, if it removes the green light from the electromagnet from the visible spectrum, what we see is the complementary colour, which is red. And as I said, the different colours depend on the length of the conjugated system. Okay. The larger the number of carbon-carbon bonds in the conjugated system, the lower the energy gap, okay. which, so the lower the energy of the light that is being absorbed, which means the higher the wavelength of the light that's been absorbed. So, for example, here we've got vitamin A and beta-carotene. Vitamin A have got, has got five carbon-carbon double bonds in the chromophore. One, two, three, four, five. Beta-carotene has got 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, vitamin A will have a bigger energy gap than the beta-carotene. So, in fact, vitamin A is just got a big enough conjugated system to move it out of the outer violet and it will absorb it violet. So to find out what colour it appears, we then look at our colour wheel on page 20 of the data booklet. There's violet 
complementary colour is yellow. So the vitamin A appears yellow. Beta carotene having a bigger conjugated system means that energy it is absorbed is smaller, so it's got a longer wavelength. So in this case it's it's blue. Uh, and the complementary colour of blue is orange. So by now you should be able to explain why most organic compounds are colourless. You should be able to describe what is meant by the term a conjugated system. Using the terms HOMO and LUMO, explain why some organic compounds are coloured with reference to this molecular orbital theory. And you should be able to recognise a chromophore and explain its role in the colour exhibited by the compound.